Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name's Allard, and uh, I'm a UX designer at Brandwatch. I'm going to start with a little promotional talk, just like the, one, uh, the speaker before me, because we're hiring, as all startups are in Berlin. Uh, for those of you that don't know what Brandwatch does, uh, we build a social analytics platform, which uh, basically allows people and uh, users, clients, to, um, to track conversations that are interesting to them online. So that could be Twitter, Facebook, but also anything basically in the social sphere. Um, and uh, what we do then is that we allow the people to slice and dice that data so that they can make actual metrics out of that. Our HQ is in Brighton. We have an office here in Stuttgart, in uh, New York, Chicago, and San Francisco. So we're growing really rapidly. So if you're interested, uh, we're looking for JS devs, Java devs, but basically anything across the board. So far, the promotional talk. On to the fun stuff. Um, so who of you guys uh, work with uh, Agile methodologies or basically with Scrum or Kanban? Right, so that's like more than three quarters of you. Okay, and who of you guys work with design sprints within that? Ah, see, like only a few. So that brings up the question, how many of you are UX designers here? Okay, not that many. Okay, well, that, <laughs> that kind of a, would, uh, would be a reason for the few design sprints. But basically, uh, for those of you who are interested in how uh, design could play a more important role in uh, your Scrum process or in your development process and how um, it could basically uh, have a larger effect on what it is that you're building, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And uh, to lead into that, I'm going to um, give you a bit of background about myself. So I kind of have a mixed uh, mixed background. I've done a lot of different stuff. I'm a UX designer from uh, academically. I studied information science, um, but I've been a freelance web dev, full stack, uh, like front end as well. Um, and I've also had a large period where I only did like business analytics. So um, I kind of went from uh, working for myself as a freelancer where everything was super messy and I had absolutely no process whatsoever to working for an agency where we kind of did this Kanban thing, but it wasn't really Kanban because we didn't know that that existed, um, to uh, going to Accenture after I finished uh, my, my studies and was a UX designer. I went to Accenture and there, as you can imagine, uh, well, the process was basically huge and monolithic and very waterfall and do six months of this and then six months of that. And uh, yeah, there was basically no iteration whatsoever unless the client dished out another million euros. Um, and then from that extreme, I went to Google where I worked in a operational team. And there I got uh, introduced to design thinking. And well, seeing as I was in an, uh, in an operational team, I didn't actually witness the release cycle up close, but I did get to see kind of like how uh, design thinking can be very inspirational in how you build, uh, yeah, disruptive tools and disruptive solutions. So at some point I decided, that, okay, I want to be UX designer full time. Um, I'm done with, uh, with search quality and web spam and what I was doing over there. Uh, I want to be UX designer and I want to build things myself or at least help design building them. And where better to do that than in a startup scene because a startup scene, everybody's super flexible and everything moves super fast. And to make any kind of cool product, you obviously have to be like big on design. So the startup scene will be awesome. But that wasn't the case. So I came over uh, and what I saw was basically that uh, it was really hard to uh, A, be agile and be lean but also B, to actually get design to be part of that cycle. Um, yeah, there's a lot of talk about being agile and being lean, and there's like a lot of people throwing out blog posts and throwing out books and even, yeah, conferences about it, but actually getting it into practice is a really, really hard thing to do and to do it well and to keep at it and to constantly have it, like, be part of what you're doing. Um, so I found that, like, design actually gets very little input in product, in my experience, because product and the dev team, the dev team is like focused on getting things built and the product team is focused on getting stuff pushed out there uh, because they want new features. Um, and design kind of always has a like a battle to fight between uh, different stakeholders in 
trying to get them to build the right thing uh, on top of them wanting to build it the right way. And uh, yeah, so gut decisions and like quick decisions, they kind of reign supreme when, you know, when there's pressure, when the pressure is on. And so um, I started to, with my design thinking experience from Google, I decided to kind of build a methodology around that that would basically embed a design thinking into the Scrum process so that you can't get around it. In other words, if you're doing your Scrum process in the right way, design will be embedded into it. Um, but before we get into that, like, how did I get to that solution? Well, so we basically have Agile and Scrum. Um, the adage being ship early, ship often. Um, you guys all know this, so I'm just going to gloss over it. You have an idea, you build something, uh, then you launch it, and then you watch how users use it, and that will give you input on uh, what then your next idea will be and what the next thing is that you build. Um, then the Scrum part of that is basically that you have fixed iterations, like fixed uh, time box sets in which you do that. You have an autonomous team, so every single team can work on its own and doesn't have to like have dependency on another team, so they can build features by themselves. And this is really, really great for resource control in the sense that you have a much more dependable kind of building process, uh, as in like development process, and you can see what's going on and you can see what's going wrong, which is even more important. Um, and it also embeds like the iterativeness into the cycle. But from a design point of view, this was really tough for me to come into. So I came into a company where uh, they were embedding Scrum. Uh, they were like really new and they had not really done Scrum before and they were embedding it themselves. And it was like, okay, we need you to be on this team and then you get, this is the stuff that we're going to do this sprint. We need this feature, like design it, build it, and ship it at the end of the sprint. And that was basically for me, like, well, okay, I don't know what it is that I want to build yet. You just gave me the feature. I still need to think about it. I need to go talk to users. I need to go get do research. I need to go get feedback. And that's really hard to do. Uh, so I, I looked into that and how we could solve that. And I came up, or I found basically the concept of Sprint Zero. And Sprint Zero is a great idea uh, for those of you who don't know what Sprint Zero is. Sprint Zero is the principle that when you build a new feature, you kind of do a pre-sprint to that. Uh, and you figure out everything it, everything that you need to build uh, the stuff that you, of the feature, of the epic, as it were, um, in the following sprints. But that only happens one time. So after that feature is built or halfway through that feature, if you need to do like more research and like really need time to get through that, like there basically isn't space. Um, so there's that problem. And there's the problem that there's no actual input from UX into dev or into product. Product comes up with an idea and basically pushes that onto you. And there's no feedback loop happening there until the thing actually gets shipped and then you get that feedback on a larger scale. But that takes very long. So looking further and trying to figure out how to solve that problem, uh, I came across this, which is design sprints. And design sprints, uh, their adage is learn early, learn often, as a spin-off of the agile adage. And um, this has uh, been developed by Daniel Burka and uh, Jake Knapp at Google Ventures. And they took the design thinking process from Stanford Design School, and they figured out a way to squash that into a one-week sprint. And they use this to, in a highly, highly iterative way, uh, design new products for, for startups and just for ideas and, and everything. Um, and... I don't, I guess, uh, seeing as there are not that many designers in the room, uh, you guys will probably not be familiar with the uh, design thinking process. But basically, the idea is that you have a couple of steps. So um, there's five steps. The first being that you empathize with your user. You find out what their problem actually is, or you find out what their situation is, their context, and then you define that problem and actually figure out what their actual problem is versus to what they're saying that their problem is. You then ideate over a bunch of solutions. Your uh, your bunch of like your ideas and your solutions uh, gets broader, and you have a whole collection of them. And then 
you narrow it down again, you find a couple of solutions that seem most promising and you prototype them. And then with the prototype, you go and test them. And that basically allows you with only a couple of people uh, and no dev involvement, practically no dev involvement, uh, depending on how complicated you want to make it, but with no dev involvement to get feedback from actual users about uh, something that you could actually build and that would be the right thing to build that you find out. So they took that and they like plumped that on top of the, uh, the, the agile process and the scrum process and that basically cuts it down. So they cut it down by half um, of getting feedback. Which is, which is great because it gives you feedback basically before you build in dev. And it's really nice. It forces you to prototype uh, and it forces you to get feedback. And the way that they do that, the way that they enable this with uh, the design sprints is that you get all the decision makers together. Uh, so you have all the important people in the room so that basically uh, nothing gets overturned afterwards. Uh, and you set up user tests beforehand. So before you even have anything at the beginning of the sprint, you already have tests happening in a week and a half, say. Um, so you better have a prototype ready. And that puts, puts on like some pressure, which is really healthy because it enables people to, um, to basically think on their feet and find, uh, find better solutions within the constraints that they have. Um, so this is really awesome for getting lots of ideas but it's less awesome for when you have a standing product, an existing product that needs to evolve and you have a scrum process already going on and you kind of need to pull people out of meetings and get them into this and that doesn't really work. So it works very well for small teams and it doesn't work well for established products. So what is it that we're missing like between the two? It's that we want to have data before we build stuff. We want to have an informed decision on what we're building. Um, we want a prototype before we do development. And then we want design, because we do that, we can enable design to guide uh, product decisions and we can also basically empower design to be a real part of what the product becomes. So next to that, we want design uh, the design of your product to be ready as much as possible before the dev happens so that you're decoupled from dev. If I, like I mentioned, I came into the team and they were like, well, you build this feature now and then the guy has to develop it in the same sprint, that doesn't work because he's dependent on me. Whereas if I have that ready and uh, it's even more clear what actually needs to be built than the tickets and all the, the stories and whatever it is that rolls out of that as artifacts, people can commit to those a lot clearer and there are no there are far less dependency issues. I'm not saying there's not going to be any because stuff always crops up, stuff always happens, but there at least they're far less. Um, and then we have the issue that uh, you would want to, once something gets built, you would want to test that afterwards. So you'd want to have f actual user feedback, not from your prototype, but from what you get built. And that is in Agile already as well, but that never feeds back into the UX process that feeds back into products taking kind of usage metrics and stuff like that. And so what we want to do as well is figure out how we can get UX metrics or user centric metrics into your product so that UX designers have uh, input from that. So that gave me the idea. Why not just m yeah, melt the two together, take design sprints, uh, take scrum sprints and add on basically the concept of uh, user-centered design testing and put it all into one thing. Why not have a design sprint pre-dev? So for every new feature that you get basically that product wants you to build, before it goes into dev, you have one sprint blocked out where you go through the whole design thinking process and thus you have a prototype and thus you have user feedback and when that goes into dev, you have far more information on how to build it and why you're building it um, so that you, you can make an informed design decision that that is the right thing to build. If you at that point decide that it's not the right thing to build, you can also go back to product saying, okay, this is not a good idea because I tested it with these guys and we have these 
these prototypes over here and they're all really, really like they don't work. Um, maybe we, we should rethink this feature. Then you're not just telling them that on a hunch, you're telling them that because you tested it. So you have data. And that's always a lot better to convince people with. Um, so what does that look like? Basically, this is the standard style. We have a sprint and things keep on going. Everything happens in the sprint. And then we cascade, or cascade, we phase the sprints. So UX works one sprint ahead of dev, and that cascades down. Why not have a post-dev sprint in which we test stuff? Um, for the most part, I actually probably think that uh, you guys are already doing this with QA or, or things like that. Um, but why not actually institutionalize that and say that you're doing that with UX as well so that UX designers can have a grip on what it is that they're looking for and actually get those metrics back out and have a place like, to handle those things. What would that look is pretty much this, look like? It's pretty much the same thing, but in reverse. So we have dev sprints, and then those phase out into a testing post sprint. And then we can connect the two, because then you get these nice diagonal lines, which essentially are mini waterfalls. Oh my god, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I did. And the thing is that I actually believe that to a certain extent, it is like necessary, because you can't build, fully build something until it has been designed. And you can't be sure that that, like, you need all that data to kind of make those connections. And the more data you have, the more confident you can be that you're building the right thing. And that's what this is about. So with that, no more disappoint. Everything's going to be awesome. Um, to, give you, to give you guys a bit of like uh, a track record of what I've done with this. So I ran this at, I've ran these types of sprints at two companies now. Um, not that many, six in total. So it's not a huge amount, but I've had really, really good results with them so far. I also have to be uh, have to be honest in that like the metrics part at the end is still like is very hard, and uh, we're working on that. Like it's a constant under development type of thing. Um, but the design sprint stuff is really, really great, and it gives you a huge amount of ideas and just a really, really broad, yeah, canvas to work with, if you will. Um, so I'm already kind of like thinking ahead of what you guys might ask, right? All right, so um, we're not always building new features. We're iterating over features. We're not always launching new features because uh, things might take longer to, to develop. Um, and like these things, this is going to be going on continuously. So these are going to overlap, right? Yeah, and that's actually, that's very much the point. So the idea is that you get a continuous feedback loop, which is the whole point of actually being agile on your UX metrics. And you are both at the same time looking ahead at what you're going to build and looking back at what you have built, checking that it's what you have built, checking that it's the right thing. Um, and this basically enables you to tie what's coming out on one end directly into what's going in again into the next sprint. All right, so what is it that you can do? You guys can do right now to get this happening. Well, basically, as designers, um, I would say try to get ahead of the curve a little bit. Try to get products to sign off on some stuff that is further ahead. Like this is the direction that they want to go. And then at some point, once you've got a bit of breathing space, breathing room, um, block off a sprint and do the design sprint. That'll generate so many ideas and so many. I'm, I guarantee it will generate so many things for you that you will never want to do it differently anymore after that. You only need one sprint. I swear to God, it's that good. Um, yeah, so basically what, you do, what, what that'll help is it'll create time pressure. Uh, it'll help uh, you build prototypes and get data on those. Um, and you'll have quick research that you can immediately feed back into devs. On the flip side, uh, once devs have built something, you can have data that will assess if what you actually did was the right choice, if if your design actually helped. And that should, hopefully, should always be a positive outcome because you already prototyped it, so it should only, should hopefully just underline things that you already believe. Um, yeah, and that, that'll help you move forward. So that will, can take us from 
the adage of shipping early and shipping often to learning early and learning often, but actually learning continuously and shipping continuously. Thanks.